You can see these large footprints embedded into the carpet, creeping along the wall ninja style. She raised her arms up over her head and started to come towards me. Oh! And she had her mouth open like she was screaming. I hear my sister on the top bunk say, Ashley, you could see pieces of her hair being twirled in thin air. But now all of a sudden, the green orb comes towards our truck, then it shoots out over the mountains into outer space. It is gone. So that is my ghost story. Hi, and welcome to the Haunted AF Podcast, the podcast of real ghost stories told by real people. We are your hosts. I'm Julie Fist. And I'm Rebecca Black. So coming up in just a little bit, we have one of those like perfect marriages of true crime yes. and a ghost story. Okay. And I, Rebecca has not heard this story yet, and I'm like, I'm shitting my pants. I cannot <laughs> wait for you to hear this story. So that's so all excited. coming up. Uh, real quick, um, we've got the Haunted AF doll in the hall challenge going on. All we're asking is that you, what you take a creepy doll, put it somewhere in your house, surprise your kids, your husband, whoever. We want you to scare the crap out of them and then send us the video. Yeah. And if you don't have a creepy doll, don't go and buy one. Somebody you was can sending, make one. I, I got a sticks and leaves out of your backyard. Wait, you know what? That sounds terrifying. <laughs> Do that. But anyhow, you don't have to have a doll. You can do any of your Halloween decorations. If you have like that trinket from grandma that like makes everybody really nervous, you can set that out. I haven't gotten a single uh, doll in the hall video no. yet. So yes, please send those hauntedafpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, also, don't forget if you've binged all the episodes in the podcast and you're like, I want more, go to our Patreon page. That's at patreon.com backslash haunted af tons of exclusive content there and rebecca and i are also taping a movie podcast right now mm -hmm. the movie minute and you can find that on my movie website juliesesso.com this week we're going to review shang chi and the legend of the ten rings oh. and Candyman. oh my god candy man so candy man i know i'm so excited about that all right so let's go ahead and jump into the stories this is from amanda hey ladies it's Amanda. You guys know about my mother and how she passed away last year. Well, about two months ago, my father told me that there was a woman that he was kind of talking to. And of course, I want him to be happy. But I just had these like weird feelings about her. And I wasn't so sure that I could like tell him. So I said to my mom, if there is any way you could let dad know if this is a good relationship for him, if it's not a good relationship for him, somehow just give him a clue. That following Sunday, I was talking to my dad on the phone, and he had just redid that some of the parts of the house, and he had said to me, I'm sitting on the front porch. You know, I didn't want to tell you this, I was a little disturbed last night. I was taking a video and showing the woman that I'm talking to what I've done to the house. And when I got from the kitchen to the living room, I turned to the side to show her the new door that I built. I had this feeling that somebody walked right by me. He's like, I knew it was your mom. And the feeling that I got right away was that I should not be talking to Cindy. He's like, and I have it all on video. So... I'm gonna send you guys the video. Don't mind the house, of course, it's just my dad. He's just trying to get everything together. But in the video, right where he told me he could feel my mom walk by him, you can actually see this huge, like it's, like, it's just white. It doesn't look like a bug, doesn't look like anything. It is literally like this thing that just shoots by him. You can see it without doing slow-mo, but when you do slow-mo, you can really see it. But uh, he said to me, I know that was your mom. He was also taking a video because the damn dog ripped up his entire sofa. <laughs> so you'll see that in the background. But yeah, just let me know your thoughts. Thanks a lot. Take care. So Rebecca's going to watch the video for the very first time right now. There's the door. There's the mess. I still didn't clean it up. We're getting there, baby. Did you see that? You did. Yeah. So there it is in slow motion. 
It looks like somebody slingshotted a rubber band across the room. Uh, yeah, there's this just flash of white. And to me, it's almost like if somebody had a cold and sneezed <laughs> really hard. If your cat sneezed. If my cat <laughs> sneezed, seriously, that's what it, it looks does. like. It's like a big old thing of snot. But he has just shown you the room and there's nobody in there yeah. except the dog and the sofa <laughs> that the dog has destroyed, okay? I don't know if you could see that in the video. Uh, like it was kind of dark. Oh my gosh. I'm there's the door. There's the mess. I still don't clean it up. We're getting there, baby. All right, see yeah, the look. sofa? Oh, oh my you, God! <laughs> you have to look through the room. Yes, there's cotton, like, the inside of it all yes. over. So that's another thing I thought was, is it possible that this is cotton from, from the, the sofa yeah, or okay. something? But there is very clearly a white thing that goes flying by. I feel sad for all of them, but especially this dad's new girlfriend. Do you know? I'm like, Cindy, get out of here, you bitch. <laughs> you are not welcome. I don't, I mean, that's not cool. <laughs> yeah. it's I mean, like, it's not, but at the same time, how long has it been? It hasn't been that long yet. How long? How long? A year. It needs to be at least a year. Okay. Uh, our next story comes from Sarah. She says, hello, Julie and Rebecca. I wanted to say how much I've been enjoying your podcast. It's really helped me through COVID. Oh, that's very sweet. I'm like, I think it's helped us through COVID as yeah, well. Yeah, I did. <laughs> uh, this happened a few years ago when I went to a friend's house for a Thanksgiving dinner. This house was built in the mid 18th century and had had some work done to it over the years, but the part where my experience happened had no major renovations. Okay. We were having Thanksgiving dinner in the dining room when I noticed a young woman in what appeared to be a Victorian style white dress casually walk by the window. Mm -hmm. I turned my head to get a better look and we made eye contact for about a second, but then I blinked and she was gone. I asked later and the woman who owns the house said that she had had a few experiences there. Thank you again for your podcast. I can't wait to hear more episodes. Take care, Sarah. Uh, honestly, I'm really surprised that we don't get more like Thanksgiving and Christmas ghost stories because you're always going to visit some old person's house, oh, right? <laughs> but it's also like a time of family. So I would think if somebody was going to like appear to you, it would be around the holidays, right. right? And it seems like here at our house, it's usually around like Christmas and New Year's when mm -hmm. the lights start flickering mm -hmm. and stuff. Wait a minute. First thing, you walked in the door and you're like, I just had to go to the oh! Matrix. Tell me your glitch oh in the Matrix gosh. story. Okay, it's not that exciting. Forgotten. It doesn't matter. Tell us anyhow. <laughs> I can't believe I forgot. I'm so sorry. So I'm literally driving to your house from work and there's a Range Rover that's to my right and is getting over into the lane and mm -hmm. it goes whoop, whoop, like, uh, like it froze in time. What? Yes. And it what? did like the little, like it did like a record, like a record scratch. It went, whoop, whoop, oh! And then got in front of me. And I was like, what just happened? Did I just witness my very first ever glitch in the Matrix? I think I did. I, yeah. It's possible my eyes just got stuck. <laughs> but I think it was a legitimate glitch in the Matrix. More proof of the simulation theory. I think so. <laughs> just saying. Uh, we had the other night, my husband and I were watching TV. And <gasps> um, yeah. incident? It, yeah. We were just sitting there and the lights, it, and our lights in our family room, mm -hmm. they're on three different channels. So you can turn on like one set of lights or another okay. set of lights. All of the lights at the same st time started just like Ooh. blinking really, really fast. And they just kept going. And Dave and I both just kind of turned and looked at each other. And it's like, <laughs> wait, you gonna, wait, uh, what, what are we going to do? do? Yeah. And then it stopped. Then it went totally dark. Ew. And then it came back on again. And, went, and then it just went away and the lights were back on. That's crazy. <laughs> That's awesome though. I want some flickery lights. No, you don't. We probably have electricity issues and our house is going to burn down. <laughs> don't say that. Oh, by the way, uh -huh. I was going through my podcast the other day looking for something to listen to and I saw that the Real Life Ghost Stories podcast yeah. is releasing episodes now. Ooh, yes. So just want to let y'all know because I know a lot of people, like we share listeners mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of people came to us from those guys. So, so glad to see that Emma is uh, bouncing back a little bit from the loss of Dan. So we got an email from Anita Cusick who sent a Twitter link. The tweet was from Dan Schreiber from the No Such Thing as a Fish podcast. And it said, interesting bedtime chat with my three-year-old tonight. Daddy, I had a family a long time ago and my mummy was called Sochi and I was called Anka, but then I died and now I'm with your family. Ugh. Anyway, if anyone needs me, I'll be up cleaning the pants I just shed in. 
<laughs> for the rest of the night. Yeah. So then after this tweet, everybody starts following up with their own creepy kids stories. Oh my God. And, I love yeah. it. Okay. So this one came from hashtag, hello, my name is Claire. Mm. When my son was little, he never liked his toenails being trimmed, used to go gray and physically shake proper panic attack. He said it's because when he was a soldier, he had his toenails pulled out. <gasps> yeah. Uh, this one comes from at Mitch underscore R23. Creepiest thing my son ever said was when we were driving and he went, oh, look at all the people. There were no people, but we just happened to be driving past a local cemetery. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, this next one comes from at Trey Cadillac, I guess. T-R-E-A. <laughs> Yeah. C-A-D-E-L-I-C. Tra Tracadelic? Tracadelic? I don't know. I like Trey Cadillac. <laughs> Trey Cadillac is better. I do like that one. Uh, so they said, my mom and sister were in a taxi with my nephew when he was about three. He pointed at a branch of Claire's accessories and said, when I was a big boy and I was a fireman, I used to go in that pet shop. Ugh. The elderly taxi driver almost crashed, said it had been a pet shop when he was a kid. And by the way, actual taxi driver was who was driving that day responded in the comments. Yeah, this thread is amazing. So we've reached out to Dan. We're going to try to get him on the podcast Fingers and crossed. share some more of those stories. But go to the Haunted AF Twitter feed. We retweeted it this past Saturday. So that's August 21st if it helps you find it. And thanks everybody who's been sending scary stuff to us that came to us from a link we've been getting the best stuff from Yay. like tiktok and everything Love so it. guys please keep sending that stuff haunted af podcast at gmail.com so this next story comes from marco hello rebecca hello julie my name is marco i'm 45 years old and i live in the netherlands i love your podcast been binge listening for about three four weeks now and it completely caught up you keep saying that the well has run dry and that you need a story so i have a short one for you i live in an apartment building and my next door neighbor was a bit of a recluse. We didn't really talk at all. Um, we greeted each other when we met in the, when we ran into each other in the supermarket or stuff like that or in the hallway, but that was it. I didn't even know his name, although we've been next door neighbors for about 15, maybe 20 years. Last year, I came home from work and I saw my neighbor sitting on a park bench near the apartment building that we live in. And as always, I greeted him and he didn't say anything back to me. He just looked at me. I didn't know if he really, really saw me, but he, uh, he had this blank expression on his face and I thought nothing of it. It was a bit of a weird guy. So uh, I went home. The day after that, I, uh, I came home from work and there was a funny smell in the common area of the apartment building. I, unfortunately, I knew what the smell was, but I didn't know where it came from. And um, the day after that, my downstairs neighbor came to me and said, well, it's pretty awful what happened to your, uh, to your neighbor. I said, what happened to him? And they said, well, they found him yesterday dead in his apartment. It appeared that he had been dead for about three to four weeks. And yeah, that gave me a bit of a scare. I... Well, as most guys say that they're skeptics, I'm not a skeptic. I am a believer, but I haven't uh, really experienced anything prior to this. And, uh, well, it really, uh, it, it really freaked me out a little bit. Well, uh, thank you for listening. Feel free to edit it as well. You know, English is not my first language. I uh, love your podcast, and I can't wait to hear more from you. Oh, thank you, Marco. That was Awesome. Isn't that great? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. So I wrote him back and I'm like, well, how do they think he died? And Marco said that they believe he had a heart attack and they knew that he had been there for a few weeks because he had just come from the grocery store uh -huh. and all of his food was still <gasps> sitting on the counter and Ain't they could, and they, yeah, and they could see the receipt. So that's how they knew when he had oh, had his heart man. attack. Isn't that amazing? That's a great story though. <laughs> okay. So this next story comes from Misty. She says, when I was younger and I had an aunt who definitely had a ghost. We didn't want to tell my little cousin, so it was kind of hush-hush if we were ever over there. He woke up one night to his door handle jiggling. After that, left his door open. I don't know. I'd have to nail that thing shut. Right? I know. Yeah. Uh, once he ran to my aunt's room and told her he had dreamt about a man standing over him in bed, right above his face, just watching him sleep. Ooh, don't God, do that. That's terrifying. Uh, my aunt said, well, what did he look like? 
My cousin described the exact same man my aunt had seen around her house. He looks like he's from the 70s. Ooh, I like it. We got a hippie ghost. <laughs> With his, his hair swept to the side, corduroy pants, and a button-up shirt, and a knit vest over it. See, I'm not seeing a hippie. I'm seeing, like, Meathead from the Archie Bunker show. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah, with the, the comb over. Yeah, oh my gosh, That's yes. What I'm he has shown up behind my aunt in the mirror a few times, played with her hair. <gasps> Yeah. And has sat on the end of her bed multiple times. Twice now he's appeared in the doorway and motioned for her to follow him. She isn't scared, just curious, so she follows him downstairs. And every time he disappears once he gets to that bottom step. Once we were all sitting downstairs and heard walking upstairs and someone knocking. So my mom asked if my cousin was there and my aunt just giggled and shook her head no. So I guess I've heard him too, LOL. We did some digging and found out that the man who lived in the townhouse behind her died under unknown circumstances. Ooh. She found his obituary and there he was in the pic with the button up shirt, vest, and hair combed to the side. Love you both, Misty. Thanks, Misty. I don't know why that story makes me really sad he's yeah. trying to show her something but he can't show her right. like there's something that's keeping him from doing it okay. so this next story is one of the longest that we've ever had on the haunted af podcast and in a second you're going to understand why so uh just uh, get a glass of water settle in grab a beer whatever okay. this is from audrey hey julie and rebecca i have got some ghost stories for you <laughs> Am I allowed to mention that I took an edible a little yes. bit ago? So I grew up in Indiana and Get ready. so my home, <laughs> this is rough. Yeah. Okay. No joke. I paused my recording and I just went and got some sun chips. So now I feel very confident, very ready. So I grew up in Indiana I love and so much. we had these really awesome woodsy backyards. Why did I say backyards? <laughs> Like I had multiple yards. Okay. Okay. I'm going to start over. <laughs> we shared I'm a woodsy crying. backyard with a abandoned house behind us. Well, presumably abandoned. I assumed it was abandoned because we had never had a neighbor there. So I just thought it was an empty house. But one day my brothers and I were playing in the woods and we found a raccoon skull and we were like, oh sweet, let's go show mom. So we showed mom and she made a joke about like, thank goodness it's not a human skull. And she and my brothers laughed and I was like, what? <laughs> like, that would be terrifying. It's not a funny joke, mom. So they told me that we did used to have a neighbor. His name was Herb Baumeister, which is kind of difficult to say. Those bees back to back. <laughs> and he lived there before my parents moved in. So he was already there when my parents got there. And my mom saw him once walking along our fence line and our dog was barking like crazy. And so my mom came into the backyard and yelled, oh, sorry, our dog's so nice. She just barks. And he didn't look at her. He just kept walking straight. And my mom was like, that guy's weird because it was the 90s and he was wearing an outfit that looked like the 70s, apparently. <laughs> so my mom judged him rude. Okay, so <laughs> serial killer neighbor. She would go to Indianapolis hey. <laughs> and pick up young men at gay bars and bring them back to his place. They would start getting frisky in the indoor pool and things would start to escalate into some light choking, which is fine <laughs> until it's not fine because then he would strangle them and kill them and bury their bodies in our shared backyard. Ah! Da -da -da -da. <laughs> Furthermore, one of his potential victims escaped. And he had actually known some of the men in the area who had disappeared. So when he escaped, he went straight to the police and he was like, hey, I think you need to look into this guy and investigate him for some of these missing cases. So I should speed it up so I can get to the ghost stuff. But basically, they started an investigation and Herb found out and fled to Michigan and shot himself. So they found the remains of, I think it was 11 plus bodies but they could only identify eight which is really heartbreaking that a lot of families didn't get to have their like missing family members case resolved but actually the person who lives there now is currently trying to do that which is really awesome so now let's tell some ghost stories baby think of, i don't have a podcast you need so a podcast nobody no. lives there i thought it was abandoned from the time i was born until my sophomore year of high school, 
a family moved in and they had a son my age and he was hot. And real quick, this family's last name, Graves. Not kidding. Yeah. Uh, so I befriended him and we would all go to their house because his parents were a little wacky. You have to be a little wacky to buy a haunted house. Mm -hmm. They said they got a great deal on it, which I believe. Imagine um, that. They didn't care what we did, so we would always go to their house to drink cheap vodka out of plastic water bottles. <laughs> and this house was everything you would expect it to be. It was a mansion for some reason. Dark wood, lots of carpet, an old piano, mm. an old library. And then when you walk into the kitchen, I think maybe I'm imagining this. But I know for sure that they had all their pots hung up, and I'm pretty darn sure they had all their f-ing knives hung up. And then we go downstairs. There's an indoor pool and a cement basement, and we swam in that indoor pool. No, and you actually, didn't. I felt the most comfortable in that room, which is interesting because it's the most haunted because that's where he would actually uh-huh. kill them. Yeah. And Our friend, Mr. Hot Guy Graves, would often be not able to hang out because ghost hunters and mediums and like people for shows would be coming to his house. And so he would tell us some of those stories. And apparently there was a six-year-old girl medium and they were in the pool room and they asked her to go into this like storage room. And she was like, I can't go in there because there are people sleeping in there. Ah! So then my high school stupid ass and my friends, we all went into that of course room. You did. And of we course all crowded did. into this pool storage room mm-hmm. and turned the lights off, which is like so sexy when you're in high school. You're like, I'm in the dark and there's like Luke from math class right next to me. <laughs> Seven like anything can happen. But obviously nothing happened. <laughs> So we all crowd into this storage room, have the lights off. I'm terrified because I I didn't want to mess with the ghosts in the first place. I just wanted to become friends with Mr. Hot Guy Graves. And I don't know much about pools, but I'm pretty sure a pool vacuum is a thing, Mm -hmm. like a pool vacuum cleaner. So we were all crowded in here. And tough guy number one starts taunting the ghosts. He was like, if you're in here, turn on this vacuum. Nothing. And we were all like, dude, stop. But we were also like giggling. <laughs> and then he goes, turn on, bitch. And the vacuum came on. And we were all like, heck no. <laughs> so we sprinted out of there. And that was the only creepy thing I witnessed there. But of course, inside that house, ugh, you just, you felt it. Heck, I felt it even in my backyard. I was always creeped out about something as a kid. So this mansion also had a... um guest apartment attached to it and they had a family friend move in and this guy was like 30 year old single guy he like claimed the most disturbances when he'd be swimming in the pool he would feel like he was being choked and when he was in his apartment doors would slam all the time i wonder if it was herb's ghost like choking him or it was the nice ghost trying to warn him like get out of here which is really sad to think about Some of the ghost hunter people say that Herb's ghost is in the house and it likes to stand by the front windows and stare out into the backyard, which also looks at my house. (laughs) Nothing ever happened between Mr. Hot Guy Graves and I. Oh my gosh, I hope you guys can't hear my dog licking himself right now. Listen, listen. Elmer! You totally guys, good. I almost forgot to tell you two of the best stories. Okay, first of <laughs> all, more. the Graves family used to always see this ghost that was wearing a red t-shirt and had no legs, and he would just kind of be lingering in the woods, and they would see him all the time, and it didn't bother them, but they were like, what is that ghost still doing there? And then they found a femur in the woods, and then they stopped seeing that ghost. <laughs> Second story. Herb used to, what a freak. Herb would keep, that was mean to say, he was a freak. Maybe cut that out, because maybe, I don't know. Herb is a murderer, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, thank you. He used to keep mannequins around his pool to make it like feel like he was having a party. No! Uh, Last thing, this location is called Fox Hollow Farm, 
So if you look that up, you can find all these details and more, baby. (sighs) Signing off. (laughs) Bye. 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 Audrey, you are our new best friend. That was the greatest of all the stories I think we've ever, ever had ever. on Haunted AF. And, and the crazy thing is that it gets better because she, okay, because <laughs> I wrote her back. I was oh, like, good. oh my God, I love you. She <sighs> said that she's still in touch with Hot Guy Graves. Okay. And that he's willing to talk to us. Okay. But if you Google Fox Hollow Farms, her Baumeister, there is tons of of information about him. You can see inside the house. You can see the pool. We're going to post all the links. We're going to post all the pictures, anything we can find to go along with this. Again, hauntedaf.com. Go to the blogs and it's episode four, season six. I know I want to go too. I want to go. But even when you look at the pictures inside this place, especially the pool, especially Um, the pool, you can feel it just looking at these pictures like oh that God. that place is touched so hopefully hopefully we are going to be talking Please. soon to hot guy graves <laughs> i kind of want to get these two together like, i know what I'm, if after all these years that this is that the haunted af podcast is what brings these two together wouldn't that be amazing it would be so can we officiate just hook up they don't yeah, have to get I'm, married just hook up that I would be enough to get married and have murdering babies do it in the pool room <laughs> Oh, yes. Please, please. Yes, yes, yes. So remember, please send us all your scary stuff. Hauntedafpodcast at gmail.com. We like it written, recorded, audio, video. We want it all, please. don't forget about those doll in the hall videos. Get on it. Scare the crap out of your friends and family. Get that stuff on tape and then send it to hauntedafpodcast at gmail.com so we can use it on the next Haunted AF. (laughs)